Hey guys, welcome to another video. Uh, the time is finally here. I apologize if this video is a little late. Um, the reason why it was a little late for this year, or at least for the 2017 film year, um, is there was a lot of films that came out in my area a little later than usual. Um, and because my work schedule has been so busy lately, it kind of took me a while to get around to all the films that I really kind of wanted to see th for 2017 um, and kind of give my fair first time opinion of and everything like that. And just in case there was that rare kind of great film that would make my, my list at the top 10 for my top 10 best of the year, that way I could add it onto the list if I really feel, felt like it deserved to be on the list. That happened with my 2016 best of the year list when The Founder came out that ended up joining my list at the last minute. Um, unfortunately, there wasn't a film that did that for this list. I probably could have done this list earlier if I would have known ahead of time, but you know, I have to see these movies in order to know if I like them or don't like them but anyway on to the video that it's that we're going to do for this this video today let's just leave it at that um I'm going to go over I'm going to go over my top 10 favorite films of 2017 these are the 10 films that I strongly believe uh re represent the best in filmmaking for the course of the 2017 film year films to me that really struck me as you know really unique or had great stories or great characters or there was just something about it you know directing rise or writing wise or just there was just something about these 10 films that really kind of um, stuck out to me is just the best, just the, the films that I know over the course of the next several years, I'm probably going to return to these films in one shape or another, whether it's numerous times or select times when I'm in the mood for something. Um, but these 10 films really struck me as films that are truly great, that truly represent the best of 2017 in, in film. So I guess we'll start at number 10, and as we work up the list, that means I like that film even more. So once we reach number one, that's obviously my favorite film of the year. So um, let's start at my number 10 pick, which is 47 Meters Down. This might shock a lot of people because this actually has not really showed up in like top 10 worst of the year, but people are kind of going over this one as one of their weaker films of 2017. I completely disagree. I was a little shocked by that when I heard this from people because I loved 47 Meters Down. I think it's a great shark movie. I think it's a great thriller. I think it's a great performance from Mandy Moore and Matthew Modine who both play very important roles in this movie. Um, it's a very scary situation of a movie. Um, these two girls are stuck in this cage down in the water and there's hungry sharks all over the place. This film completely takes advantage of just how scary a situation like that would be and what someone would have to do to get out of that situation. And even though the scuba science sure is off in it, and the, you know, there's, there's all these articles about how inaccurate this would be and how these girls would be eaten alive if this, something like this really happened. Uh, but if you look at this as a thriller, as a situation movie where two girls are stuck in this very, very scary situation where you know maybe one or the other might know something a little bit more about do, pers, pers, um, pursuing something more so than the other, but I really was impacted by this movie. I thought it was very scary. Um, I really felt for these characters. It just really struck me in all the right ways for a summer blockbuster film. So 47 Meters Down is my number 10 pick for 2017. For my number 9 pick, um, and this film also kind of had a lot of mixed opinions as far as people who really, really liked it and people who really didn't like it, um, and that's Star Wars Episode Eight: The Last Jedi. When this film does something really great, it really did something great. Um, though Ryan Johnson wasn't my number one pick for directing this movie, I would have preferred either J.J. Abrams coming back or a Brad Bird or a John Favreau or someone along that line directing this movie. Um, I thought the, the story of Rey, the story of Kylo Ren, continuing uh, where Force Awakens left off and kind of pursuing you know what exactly happens immediately after that we really don't get that a lot in a star wars movie um it was great to see luke skywalker again princess leia again both who get really cool things to do in this movie uh there's just a lot of things to love about the last jedi so it makes it in at my number nine pick for my number eight pick of best of 2017 it's the shape of water by Guillermo del toro this man continues to impress me i love several of his movies uh but really struck me the most though with shape of water is this man continues to balance both visuals and storyline completely well. Um, he's one of these rare filmmakers that really does know how to balance a great story with some great visuals. 
Um, the Shape of Water also has a lot of messages about people feeling incomplete and what they need to do to be able to feel complete again, to feel happy again. Um, there's just a lot of things to love about The Shape of Water, and it's a great science fiction movie, has a great production design. I think it's nominated for a lot of these things I already mentioned here, too. And it really does deserve this for the Oscars, because this film really does represent so many elements of great filmmaking. The acting is great. Sally Hawkins... I, I guess you could say she never speaks a word the whole movie. It's all through sign language, but I'd be spoiling it if I do say why um, she doesn't exactly go completely silent over the whole movie. Um, Octavia Spencer is great in the, the movie. Um, Michael Shannon, who always plays a great villain, plays a great villain here in this movie. There's just so much to love about The Shape of Water. It makes it into my number eight pick for the best of the year. At number seven, we have a film that's winning a lot of festivals, winning a lot of award shows so far, and hopefully the Oscars, because I really hope it does. This film is great. Um, my number seven pick is Lady Bird by director Greta Gerwig. I loved Greta Gerwig in The House of the Devil, and I was always interested in kind of, when I first heard she was going to direct a film, I was very interested in seeing what she would do as a director and what kind of elements she would bring from her acting career and into a directing career. Lady Bird perfectly displays this. It's a great story, a great film, has great characters. One thing I was explaining to a friend of mine about Lady Bird that I really can't say a lot in a movie is I felt like I was watching real people, and I really think that goes to show how great the writing is in this movie. I really do feel like I'm watching real people going through real problems, through real situations, that they're really growing and developing and they're understanding where their family is and how they got there and why their family is there. And even though, let's say, life won't get you know wealthier or better in certain regards, they find kind of their happiness within what they have. Um, Lady Bird is about all those things. It's a great film with great emotion and a great story. Laurie Metcalf, I believe, is nominated for Best Supporting Actress in this film. She really does deserve the award if she gets the award. She's this very strict mother with very strict rules. You really feel for the lead character when she's in trouble because you know she's going to be in trouble. You know she's not going get, to get away scot-free with a lot of these troublemaking decisions she ha has throughout the movie. Lady Bird truly is a fake magnificent film with terrific performances and a great story. It makes it in at my number seven pick. Uh, number six is The Disaster Artist. Um, James Franco had to take on a film where it's a comedy and a drama about a man making one of the worst films ever made that became a big, big cult film over the years. Um, the Disaster Artist is everything you would want it to be. It's funny. It's informational. It's a great buddy film between um, Tommy Wiseau and his friend Greg, who plays a big role in the movie. Um, it shows everything you need to know about The Room being this complete disaster of a film production. Um, James Franco really made this film fun, and I, I think that's what I really love about it, is it's fun. It shows the so bad it's good kind of film community and why people should be more involved with that kind of thing. Um, the Disaster Artist is such a fun film. It didn't get as many nominations at the Oscars as I'm hoping it was going to, but it really is a great film if you have not seen The Disaster Artist, it's funny, it's dramatic, it's a great time at the movies. At number five, we have Spider-Man Homecoming. I've been a huge Spider-Man fan over the course of my life. Um, Sam Raimi's three films that he worked on alone uh, really impacted me in so many ways. I rewatched those films so many times over the years. Um, I love Marvel. I just, I just love the overall Spider-Man character and the story he uh, is contained in in the comics and everything like that. Um, I really was not too impressed with the Mark Webb films. I really thought Spider-Man Home Homecoming brought the series back in the direction that we always wanted to see Spider-Man, that it's fun. It's accurate to the comics. Um, it shows how complicated Peter Parker's life is. We have a great villain with um, Michael Keaton playing the Vulture. Uh, there's just so many things to love about Spider-Man Homecoming. It works great as a high school movie and as a superhero movie, and as a Marvel Cinematic Universe movie. It works on so many levels. It's such a great, fun film, and I can't wait to watch it again. Spider-Man Homecoming is my number five pick. At number four, we have the 2017 remake of It. I'm a huge Stephen King fan. This thing was everything I wanted with the remake of It. Um, we had a new great Pennywise that competes with Tim Curry's Pennywise. And I, I still like Tim Curry's Pennywise a little bit better, but I gotta tell you, Bill Skarsgård really made a great Pennywise in this film. And you really can't uh, compare the, the his Pennywise with Tim Curry's too much. It's because they are two very different 
approaches to this character, but they will both work very, very well for the Stephen King story. Uh, the Losers Club was a lot of fun to watch. They chose the perfect cast of kids for that. Um, it was just a fun, scary, great well-written, well-directed film that really is worth everybody's time and money. If you're not a fan of Stephen King yet, if you haven't read a lot of his books or seen a lot of his film adaptations, this might get you more intrigued with seeing more of his work based on just how great the quality is in this movie. It is my number four pick on my top ten list. At number three, we have Logan. James Mangold did a terrific job with the film The Wolverine a couple years back. I, I couldn't wait to see what he would do with another Wolverine film. He really brought it home with Logan. It was emotional. It was action-packed. Um, it was well-written. It was well-acted. Hugh Jackman was robbed of an Oscar nomination in this movie. He just completely nailed the Wolverine character in this. He always has nailed the Wolverine character, but he really nailed it in this movie. Um, everything you would want with a Wolverine film was in this. It was R-rated. They showed Old Man Logan. They introduced us to new interesting characters. Just almost everything you would want with a Wolverine film happened in Logan. It's my number three pick for best, um, for best films of the year. At number two, though, we have Dunkirk. Uh, I'm a huge Christopher Nolan fan. Um, I'm not a huge war genre person. You know, if there's a good war film, if it looks intriguing to me, if it's a Saving Private Ryan or something along that line with a huge director and a big cast involved, sure, I'll see it. I have nothing against the war genre, but I got to tell you, Christopher Nolan, I think, wanted, he got me more interested in the war genre just because of how great he made Dunkirk. Um, he made it scary. He made it thrilling. He made it dramatic. Um, he really puts you into the war. And not only, only depicts the war well on film he literally puts you into this war in the movie um the soundtrack by Hans Zimmer is really a character in this movie alone it's just such an important element it really does put you into the situation that these characters are in and it's just such an interesting great historically accurate as far as I'm aware of film that really hits home in every department it can. Christopher Nolan continues to master his craft as a film director. I can't wait to see what he does next because he nailed it in Dunkirk. It's my number two pick of the year. Now for my number one favorite film of 2017, it's Wonder Woman. This film is fantastic. Gal Gadot is Wonder Woman. Patty Jenkins is director. It's a great World War I film, a great fantasy film, a great action movie, a great comic book film, a great superhero film. Um, Patty Jenkins and Gal Gadot alone, they, they spent days in production just developing the Wonder Woman character alone. Um, it's such a... Um, it really makes you think about the the world we live in and how we can make it better. What makes us great as people? What do we need to do better as people to make the world better? Um, the Wonder Woman character, the Diana Prince character, challenges people to keep asking this question and to keep um, encouraging us to, you know, why is a watch valuable? Um, what do we get out of a war? What do we get out of peace? What do we get out of relationships? What do we get out of... Um, bonding with people. What do we get out of weapons? You know, it asks all these questions, and it really is a great film in every department. It just does everything you would want with a Wonder Woman story. Um, I've always been intrigued by the Wonder Woman character. Um, Batman and Superman were kind of everybody's go-to for DC, but I got to tell you, after seeing Wonder Woman, she really is kind of up there with Batman and Superman as one of the, the DC comic characters better superheroes just because of how wonderful um, Patty Jenkins really made this character on screen and on film. It's such a masterfully crafted film. It's my favorite film of the year, which is Wonder Woman. Uh, that's my top 10 picks for 2017, guys. I'm going to have my top five weakest films of 2017 coming soon. Be on the look for that. What are your, some of your guys' um, top 10 favorite films of 2017? Let me know down below. These are my 10 favorites. Uh, let's hope 2018 gives us another great year of films.